let's fast forward a little bit to training camp. Who's a player that you're excited to watch at training camp? Easy answer. To me, this is, it's all about Drake Jackson this year. It's all to me. Like, I've seen Danny Gray. He looks good. I think he has the potential to be a hell of a number three receiver. Ty Davis Price, dude, it's, you can't really, it's, it's, it's training camp. They don't hit each other. So it's hard to really judge linebackers and running backs. This pass rusher, to me, like, if he's good, it validates the entire draft. If he's not good, this entire draft is uh, bad. So I want to see him in the one-on-one -on -one drills. I want to see him against McGlinchey. I want to see him against Trent Williams because I have a feeling he's going to be good. And if he's good, all right, well, you got a good edge rusher in this draft. That's what you got, most likely. I mean, he could be a starter for you for a long time, or he could be the new D4. That's a big deal. So I feel like right. all eyes on Drake Jackson in this. I mean, I'm going to be looking at, at, at Danny Gray as well, but really, like, no one's expecting him to start right away. Drake Jackson is supposed to be a baller at some point, right. and I think he can be. I'm not I'm not fading him the way I faded Mike McGlinchey from the start. I actually think Greg Jackson's going to be good. I want to see it happen. That's why. Um, yeah. Sorry. Right, so no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, it's just because they should go up against each other one on one. Those two. Yeah. I want to see that. Right. And Drake Jackson yeah. right now, I think he's he's more suited right now to the D4 replacement role. I yep. think that he has a little bit of work to do before he becomes a three down guy. If he becomes that three down guy like Nick Bosa, then it's out of the park, and I absolutely but that's see down that the being, line. I agree. That's yes. a couple years down the line. Yes. I absolutely see that being. Hell, he was born in one, dude. Yes, he was born in one. Yeah, his his moves, the way he yeah. wins, he wins with a little bit more finesse. I would love to see more power moves. Him be a little bit more violent. He can win inside and outside, which is good. That doesn't necessarily mean that you got to stick him out on the edge and you can do all those things. That's a that's a really good call with Drake Jackson as well, too. But I mean, it's the thinking, obvious one. I know. No, 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 no. I think yeah. that's a great call. I mean, everything else after that, I mean, is pretty much either. Great. You're yeah. playing with house money, yeah, or you're just kind of hoping yeah. to see what you have. Like I know a yeah. lot of people are excited, and I'm, and, and we'll get to how we feel about this draft class. So I, I want you to save your thoughts on that. But you, you've been at minicamp, and and for anybody who hasn't seen your reports uh, on rookies, who has been the most impressive rookie? Keep in mind the things that I would have loved to seen at rookie minicamp are the linemen, are the are the the edge guys. But yeah. there's not enough to do all those things. So really, minicamp is for running backs, wide receivers, and secondary. That's it. And, and it was seven on sevens. Yeah. It was seven on sevens. So that's what we're yeah. talking about. Usually in training camp, like I don't even really talk about seven on sevens. I only reference 11 on 11. So keep that in mind. Right. Um, so right now, rookie mini camp, you shouldn't really put too much stock into anything because one, you're not going to see any of the linemen or anything like that on either side. It's really about running backs, wide receivers, quarterbacks, and secondary. Who stood out immediately to you, Grant? It was easy. I mean, it was like, it was one guy. Actually, well, I'm going to say it was one guy. It was Danny Gray. It was Danny Gray, but I, I, I want to put it, uh, first I want to give him his flowers. He was dominant. He was the best player in the field. Five targets, four catches, touchdown, a long touchdown. The speed popped. He looked good. But keep in mind, like, it's rookie mini Kim. He's the highest draft pick on the field. Drake Jackson isn't out there. Well, Ty Davis Price. Okay, but the Ty Davis Price, it's, it's seven on seven. The running back really can't show much. So this was an opportunity for Drake, for Danny Gray to dominate, and he did. So he's going up against mostly Tariq Castro Fields. He's supposed to beat Tariq Castro Fields, and he did. That's great. He also beat Sam Womack. Um, so I, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to beat Emmanuel Mosley or Traverius Ward in a few weeks, but uh, he, he did what he's supposed to do, and it, it's encouraging. What I want to point out, though, is that he wasn't the only wide receiver who got off which is maybe discouraging for the secondary, or maybe they got other guys. Like they had a guy that's not even an undrafted free agent. He was a tryout guy from Missouri named Kiki, Kiki, K-E, K-E, Kiki Chisholm. He went yeah. off. He had an acrobatic catch near the sideline, like a back shoulder jumping, twisting fade kind of thing. And then he had two catches over the middle where he had big yak afterward. So uh, either the Niners have a couple of good wide receivers or the, that secondary without a pass rush was just getting torched by Brock Mullins, CJ Purdy. So you talking about QB QB one? Um, QB in some one. Eyes, in yeah, some yeah, yeah. Eyes. Dude, um, that guy didn't miss. He must have had like I, he must have completed ninety percent of his throws. Honestly, wow. Yeah, impressive, impressive. Yeah. All right, oh, yeah. um, we've got a we've got a super chat from Gammon. Um, thank you. Shout out to him. And honest question: Did Tart's non-interception cost him? What That's do you think? That's a great question. I do think it did. Okay. You know how the you know how the Colts basically scapegoated 
Carson Wentz for them not winning week 18 against Jacksonville. That's the main reason yeah. I think Wentz isn't there anymore. Dude, I think that's the uh, main reason. That it's one oh, of them. That, uh, that, that is yeah. the vaccine, right? The vaccine. Yeah, oh, yeah. The vaccine thing was, yeah, that was like the last thing that they were that's really true. like. That was all they talked about at the combine was about that is how true. The, that is the true. owner was done but with that. But keep going. This thing I think is really costing Tart. And to me, it's a real um, it's it's petty by the Niners because you are now downgrading. You didn't find an upgrade for Jaquaski Tart. There, yeah, there, it, it's personal at this point. It's emotional. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the the organization has already said bye to Tart already. Um, and that's and they didn't bring him in for a one on one. They did didn't you hear, bring him. Did in you hear just, John Lynch get asked about Tart at, after the draft? Yeah. Have you can he was like, I mean, yeah, Tart's done good stuff for us. I mean, hey, we can. All, it's always an option. Like he seems so annoyed. Like, dude, enough. He's yeah, always yeah. done. It, they. They moved on from Tart by not bringing him into the office and giving him an exit interview, or at least saying it to his face. They told his management right after the the, the NFC Championship game that they were moving on. It seems like obviously it was they weren't his guy. They, you know, he's from different regimes. I don't necessarily think that this interception has cost him, but I don't think that the public perception helps because the one knock was he can't make plays on the ball. The ball is right there for him. He he doesn't make the play, so it didn't help. But I don't think that's the main reason. I think that right now there's a lot of really good football players who aren't necessarily looking for extra money that are, or looking for big money that aren't signed right now. I think it's just kind of the way the market has gone for him. But it certainly didn't help. It certainly didn't help his public perception with 49ers fans, especially the ones that disliked him going into the season. And maybe around the league there's a little bit of discussion about that. But in, in the way that I'm kind of looking at it, I think in my head, I'm, or I'm just speculating is, I think he's just kind of take, waiting his time out and, you know, there's going to be somebody that's going to wind up coming, calling. And right now he doesn't really need to do anything to be at like OTAs or any stuff like that. So who knows, but it didn't help more than anything. But yeah, the 40, don't, so for 49 er fans that are here listening, he's not coming back. It's not happening. So that's it. I think it's another example of the Niners really wanting to replace a player. They didn't draft themselves. That's it. When they inherited, it's like, that's Oh, it. Tolano was our guy. Like, yeah, uh-huh. that's it. Uh huh. Sure. Good that's it. That. That's absolutely it. Right. Like, that's their guy. They're they're happy. Whatever. Cool. You know. But that was one of the things. But he's not coming back. Like, just yeah. like get it out of your mind. Anybody that's asking for Tart to come back, they've already made the decision. They told him right after the NFC title game, "You're not coming back." That's it. But they didn't yeah. do it in the classy way. Like, come to the building. Let's talk. They told his management, and he hasn't been to the building since. So, um. Jamal Armstrong, shout out to you, bro. Did Castro Fields and Womack look 4-3 fast to you, Grant? That's a question for you, man. Uh, Castro Fields, n- no. He got burned. Danny Gray worked that dude. Sam Womack only got targeted once. It was a quick dig, quick kind of slant in breaking route from Gray. So I, he never got tested deep. I can't I can't speak on that. I okay. can't say. Okay. I'll let you know. Good question. And, and there's numbers like 4-3, guys run straight 40s and things like that, but that doesn't mean they play that fast. And I think that's a little bit of what is lost in camp, or that you have to kind of see when pads go on and, and, and the game starts to move and you and guys can't play as fast because they're thinking, things like that. So I think that's all stuff that we're going to find out in a little bit more than anything. Tariq Castro feels looks like a guy who's not going to make the team. Maybe it's maybe I'm too – it's a little too early to see. He got, he got worked. If he can't guard really? Danny Gray, who you guarding, dog? You ain't guarding well, Debo. But that's what I'm saying is I don't yeah. like remember we, when we did the show earlier, he profiles more as a safety for me. And yeah. I think that's that's good for his skill set. He can be on special teams this year by this time, be a gunner, be down the field. They, they bet on his athletics, but I don't think he's a nickel corner. I think Womack is more that nickel corner than he is. I think he profiles more as a safety for me. He better because oh. he ain't a corner. I'll tell you that right now. All right. I've seen enough. Uh, that's the thing. Like these rookie mini camps, it's not like – necessarily are you sold after a day like is there is there anyone you're out on after a day you know right. what i mean like when i saw pettis the first time i'm like ew no no it's soft can't happen you know what i'm saying like there were two times over the middle where there was a ball that was a little off target that was a little high and he kind of just like waved at it with one arm like it didn't matter like dude everyone's watching man you're the you're a pro now you gotta make a tr- you gotta make a real effort and he didn't i'm like you're soft i'm writing you off and i, and I was right <laughs> so like the only person i would really write off I would. I mean, Tariq Castro feels like the 220th pick. I'm not writing him off, but I look at him more as like an undrafted free agent than a than a 100. Yeah, 100. Yeah. 